Brixham, one of Britain's premier fishing ports, remains today, as it has throughout history, as a major contributor to the fishing industry, with more than 26 million pounds worth of fish landed, bought and sold in recent years. Brixham is a town founded in its fishing industry, providing easterly shelter from the prevailing westerly winds, the port was put firmly on the map due to the invention, refinement and development of the deep sea trawler. Brixham trawlers, as the trawl developed and got bigger, they had to develop the boats to be big enough and strong enough to tow the trawl. Hence that's why the sail plans got bigger and split the rig up so it was easily, easy to handle. So you've got a lot more sails that you can play with but because they're smaller sails, you have a smaller crew to actually handle the sails. Most of these boats used to go to the sea with six or seven crew. Now they're cutting them back because of the expenses, the running costs of the boats, down to four crew. Most of these boats would be fishing anywhere off of here, south of Start Point, down towards the southwest approaches. And in the winter time, you can get some really pretty bad seas. You want something that um, can take a, a, a real sort of severe bashing. It was just the design, the frames were very close together. The outer, the outer skin of the hull um, was up to three and a half inches thick, three inches that sort of thickness of wood. And then on the inside you had another what they call a ceiling which was again about two inches. So it was a sandwich construction. So it, it was very very strong. Nobody knows for certain just when deep sea trawling began. But certainly by the late 18th century, the fishermen of Brixham, keen to overcome the problem of limited local fish stocks in South Devon waters, had begun to develop a new, more rugged and more seaworthy design of fishing vessel capable of venturing to far off waters. Because they were such a strong and powerful boat, um, they started to widen their area of operations. So they fished up in the Irish Sea, uh, went up to Scotland, Isle of Man, um, the Fleetwood area and then they went up to the North Sea and pretty much opened all the, all the North Sea up. So the local boats that were working in those areas suddenly thought, well, yeah, what's this? You know, it's, to them it was like something from another planet because they, all they had was small boats that were working off the little beaches or wherever. So as, as the Brixham men moved around, they used to, um, if they found a, a, a better fishing ground for instance, they, they worked out a Ramsgate and they were fishing in the Southern North Sea they decided, well, what's the point of sailing all the way back to Brixham to land the catch? So they actually physically moved lock, stock and barrel. So they took their families and then moved to places like Lowestoft, Grimsby, Hull. But at that point, a lot of the boats were still being built in Brixham, either on the River Dart or Brixham itself. It wasn't until people could see um, the potential of these boats that they started building them locally. So the actual design of Brixham trawlers is they're all pretty much the same but there's subtle differences. So if a boat's being built for the North Sea, normally it would have a higher bow and a bit more shear in it. Whereas if it's being built for, to fish in the English Channel, because you've got a long sweeping sea, you didn't have to have a um, slightly higher bow. Well normally on a, on a heritage boat, on one of the older ones, basically the boat sort of lays across the, the tide and the wind. Mm -hmm. and then they would start to lower the, the net over the side, not the actual beam, but it's just letting the con end and the net stream away from the boat as the boat drifts backwards. Then once the net is away from the boat and clear, they start to um, hoist the sails. Mm -hmm. So the net then starts to stream alongside and after the boat. And then once it gets up to a certain speed, they can start to lower the, the trawl down to the seabed. So they would tow with the tide for six hours and then try and try and haul the trawl um, at the slack water. Well the crew on, on the bigger ones um, probably at the, at the very most five so you've got a skipper mate um, in the old technology it'd be the skipper first mate second mate a, a bosun and then like a boy. They were all paid a share of the catch um, so there was no guaranteed wage, so whatever they caught they made and whatever that made was shared between the owner of the boat and then the rest was shared between the, um, the crew. The inshore fleet, um, pretty much they would work up and down from anywhere from Portland Bill down towards Start Point. But and then the bigger trawlers, they pretty much fish around the whole of the UK. They go all the way up the Irish Sea, they, they pretty much go wherever. 
basically everybody's got their so-called own bit of ground or where they think they can go and catch more fish than somebody else. Most of those boats, generally speaking, they wouldn't stay out too long because of the problem was ice. So they only probably did about maybe three or four days at a time, at the very longest, and um, then they would be back in to land it. Basically, whatever you caught was yours. All the fish that they, were, they used to catch or still catch today is mainly or predominantly flatfish. So it's like turbots, brills, dover soles, plaice, monkfish. Not so much um, cod or things like that because the net is quite low to the seabed. Mm. You know, whereas a lot of round fish is more, is higher up. I mean, there was no life jackets as such. Most of the gear they wore was um, quite heavy. And so if you was washed over the side, that was it, you was pretty much doomed. Despite the magnificent sea-keeping abilities of the trawler and the high standard of seamanship of the fishermen, terrible disasters overtook the trawling fleets from time to time. During the great gales of the 3rd of December 1863, 24 trawlers were lost and a total of 144 lives. From the records in the five years from 1884 to 1888, the number of men lost amounted to an amazing 1,328. The numbers grew steadily, and by the latter years of the 19th century, there were more than 3,000 sailing trawlers in commission in UK waters. With the first steam vessels being developed at the end of the 19th century, the demise of the Brixham sailing trawler had begun. In 1923, there were 90 Brixham trawlers but by 1938, only six remained. The demise of, of Brixham as, as a sailing fleet basically was two world wars. All of a sudden, the grounds that they used to work were, were covered with wrecks that had been sunk by submarines. So they had no way of actually plotting exactly where these wrecks were until they caught them, by which time they probably lost their gear. They couldn't fish where they normally fished under sail, plus also, at the same time, steam was being developed and people realised very quickly the potential of it and that was it. Sour was doomed from that day on. Today it is estimated around 60 trawlers are still based and working out of Brixham. Many of the modern fishing fleet have been bought from the Netherlands. The modern fleet, particularly in Brixham, in, uh, sort of has been redeveloped, if you like, from the 70s onwards with the um, introduction of beam trawlers, mainly from Holland. Um, so they're still beam trawling, the same as the old boats did, but the difference is they've got two nets that are supposed to one and a big engine. And the grounds that they fish are pretty much exactly the same as the grounds that their forefathers would have worked. The first time I ever went on a beam trawler, and the skipper, he had just bought this boat and he didn't even know how to get the gear over the side. So it was totally alien because you had two nets as opposed to one, one on either side. So the whole thing was a bit scary. I mean, pretty much fishermen are fishermen, they're still the same. They look the same, they smell the same, <laughs> they act the same. Brixham's fishing industry continues to thrive. A new regeneration project culminating in the new 20 million pound Brixham fish market ensures the needs of the fishing industry in Brixham are accommodated for many years to come while the heritage activities of Trinity Sailing and others ensures that the surviving Brixham sailing trawlers will be preserved for future generations.